So I will start the recording now. So everything that you will do there will be captured. So share screen na tayo. So let's start with the definition of labor standards. Now when you say labor standards, this refers to the minimum terms and conditions of employment to which employees are legally entitled and which and with which employers must comply. So since you have not yet taken up labor standards, I will explain to you briefly what is labor standards. When you say minimum terms and conditions of employment, this refers to your salary, your uh, time in and time out, yeah? the number of hours that you are going to report to work. Ano pa? Yung mga benefits mo, like, like uh, benefit, uh, yung right mo to overtime pay, to separation pay, to retirement pay, to leave, to avail leave of absence with pay. Ano pa? Yung number of days in a week, okay? So, weekly rest period, uh, daily rest period. So, these things are uh, considered as your terms and conditions of employment. So, under the labor standards, dyan nakalagay kung ano yung minimum na terms and conditions of employment. So, let's say, for example, sa sweldo mo. Sabi ng batas, bawal daw mag-employ ng empleyado, ng person, at bayaran mo siya below minimum wage. So, magkano yung minimum wage? Let us say, for example, 490 pesos per day. So, sabi ng labor law, bawal ka daw mag-hire ng person, tapos yung kanyang sweldo is below 490 pesos. Bawal daw yun. Kasi yung minimum na sabi ng batas, dapat at least minimum wage yung kanyang salary. So therefore, kung, kung nagtrabaho ka and then yung sweldo mo is below ng minimum wage, then you are not receiving the minimum terms and conditions of employment. Ano ang legal implication nun? There is a violation of the labor standards law. Okay? Another is, sabi ng batas ng labor standards, yung sweldo mo daw sa isang araw is good for 8 hours lang yan. Meaning to say, if you will work beyond 8 hours a day, you are entitled to receive an overtime pay, sabi ng labor standards. So, kapag, for example, yung employer pinatrabaho ka beyond 8 hours and then yung sinweldo niya sa'yo is yung sweldo mo lang for a day, then there is a violation of the labor standards law because sabi ng batas, Yung, isang, yung sweldo mo daw sa isang araw, good for 8 hours lang dapat yan. So kapag sumobra ka ng 8 hours, kailangan bayaran ka ng employer sa sobrang oras na binigay mo sa kanya. So kapag hindi niya kinumpla yun, so nag-violate na siya ng labor standards. So in short, ano nga pala itong labor standards? Yung labor standards, dyan nakasaad kung ano, ano dapat yung terms and conditions of employment, yung minimum. Yung minimum lang. Kasi yung employer and employee can agree naman above minimum. Example, yung minimum wage natin is let us say 490 pesos per day. Pwede namang mag-agree kayo ng employer at saka employee na 500 a day. Pwede yun. Diba? Kasi, ang sabi lang naman ng batas na dapat ito yung minimum. Bawal ka bumaba ng minimum pero pwede kang above minimum. So, pwede yun siya. So, ang pinagbabawal lang ang labor standards na hindi mo ma-violate yung minimum terms and conditions of employment. Okay? So, yan yung nakalagay sa labor standards law. So, ang pag-uusapan nyo dyan is uh, magkano yung seldo dapat for a day, ilang oras yung trabaho for a day, may rest period in a day, for example, one hour rest period, Kaya kung mapansin niyo 8 to 12, then 1 to 5, di ba? Yan yung nagko-comprise ng 8 hours. Kasi in the middle, yung 12 to 1, that is your rest period. 1 hour. So, entitled ka ng 1 hour rest period. Ano pa yung weekly? Uh, sabi ng batas, you have 24 hours 
weekly rest period, meaning to say the employer cannot force you to report to work in the entire week, meaning seven days a week. Kailangan may isang araw dyan na rest day mo. So, yan yung sabi ng batas. Kaya, kung mapapansin nyo kung mag-work kayo, six days lang talaga. Meron kayong rest day. But, may exception to the rule dyan. Yung mga nasa hospitals, yung mga medical practitioners, sa kanila, for, uh, two, days lang yung, uh, two, two days yung kanilang minimum na uh, weekly rest period. Kaya, kung mapansin niyo if you have a friend na nurse or med tech or medical practitioner, two days yung kanilang rest day. Five days yung kanilang work days. Okay? Kasi nakalagay yan sa batas. Pero if you are not in the medical field, so one day lang yung rest day, yung ordinary na requirement or standard no? or minimum terms and conditions. Okay? So naintindihan nyo ba kung ano ibig sabihin ng labor standards? Okay ba? Just a uh, comment no in the chat box no para hindi tayo maingay okay if you understood no kung walang questions okay so so let's proceed to the definition of labor relations so ma uh, you can um get a an idea no Kasi nasa word naman niya yung relations. ba sabi ko before, ang pag-uusapan natin sa labor relations is yung relationship between the employer and the employees. And between and among employees. So, yan yung labor relation. No? It refers to the interactions between employer and employees or their representatives and the mechanism by which the standards and other terms and conditions of employment are negotiated, adjusted, and enforced. So, so ang pag-uusapan natin no, in the entire term is ano yung mga rules no, concerning sa relationship between employer and employee. With respect no, to the labor standards, no, yung standard of employment. Okay? Um, but before that, let's talk about declaration of state policy. So, ito yung policy ng state. Ito yung basis ng state no in uh, in crafting no or laws with regard to uh, labor relations no number 1 you have there to promote and emphasize the primacy of free collective bargaining and negotiations including voluntary arbitration mediation and conciliation as mode of settling labor or industrial disputes so when you say free collective bargaining and negotiation meaning to say the employee can actually uh, negotiate with the employer no, with respect to the terms and conditions of employment. Let us say, for example, sabihin mo, Sir, kasi ano ako, um, member ako ng SBA, so I am not allowed to work on a Saturdays. So, pwede you can negotiate to the employer na kung pwede Sunday ako mag-work. So, pwede yun siya. No? That is about collective bargaining and negotiation. Meaning, ang pasabot lang na is, you can negotiate no, with the employer with respect to the terms and conditions of your employment. Another is your sweldo. You can negotiate with your employer no, na, Sir, pwede ba na ano, ito yung uh, mag-increase ano, mag po tag-sweldo ka? You can do that actually. no. Later on, you will know how. Okay? Voluntary arbitration, mediation, conciliation. Basically, this means, these uh, terms uh, refers to um, parang mechanisms no kung kung for example merong labor or industrial dispute meaning to say may away between the employer and the employee you can agree you can bargain or negotiate na hindi muna kayo pupunta sa korte mag-file ng case uh, daan muna kayo sa arbitration pwedeng mediation or conciliation no uh, dito muna mo mo agi no ano itong arbitration Magician Reconciliation. Para lang itong, murag nasa barangay ba nga, mag, ano lang mo, mag-settle. Mag-settle mo sa isa't isa. Pwede, sa, pwede ninyo sabutan in your bargaining and negotiations. So you can do that, no? To promote free trade unionism as an instrument for the enhancement of democracy and the promotion of social justice and development. Okay? Sabi ng state, no, ng government na, allowed, allowed yung mga 
uh, mag-organize kayo ng union or labor organization kasi kapag one-sided lang kasi employment is an agreement, di ba? Kaya nga ang ano natin is uh, contract of employment kasi it is an agreement. So supposedly, dapat yung employer at employee mag-agree sila on the terms and conditions of employment. Hindi dapat siya one-sided. Kaya the state uh, promotes a free trade unionism, no? Para magkaroon ng demokrasya, no? Makareklamo ka nga ka ng murag ka ng sakit na ma- sa buot na mo, o, ana, 'di ba? Na dapat irregular na ninyo, o. Dili mi job order permi, o, ana, 'di ba? In order to promote social justice and development. Otherwise, if the agreement is one-sided, hindi na siya agreement, 'di ba? Bilateral na siya. And therefore, murag ang employee is maipit siya, no? Wala siya kana ano, wala siya hindi niya ma-exercise iyang right, no, to to ask for a a better terms and conditions of employment. Anong magiging resulta? There will be chaos, no? Strike, lockout, ayan, magkakagulo. Magkakagulo ang organization or ang employee. Ang employee ang employee tsaka employer if there is no unionism. Kaya, the state promotes free trade unionism. Ano ang reason? For a strong and united labor movement. Kasi kapag, actually, you can individually bargain with your employer. Pwede ka namang pumunta sa employer mo, makipag-bargain ka sa kanya with respect to the terms and conditions of your employment. Kaya lang, Meron kasing ano, meron kasing disadvantage kung ikaw lang isa, no? So the state also um, encourages, no, to organize uh, labor organization yung marami kayo na employee. So that you have a strong and united labor movement, di ba? Para daghan mo, okay? To promote the enlightenment of workers concerning their rights and obligations as union members and as employees to provide an adequate administrative machinery for the expeditious settlement of labor or industrial dispute. So, uh, dapat daw the employer must have um, administrative machinery no, within their uh, company no, in order to uh, settle no, labor or industrial dispute. To ensure a stable but dynamic and just industrial peace. No, kapag, kapag merong harmonious relationship sa employer at saka sa employee, then there will be industrial peace. And to ensure the participation of workers in decision and policy making processes affecting their rights, duties, and welfare. So, letter B, to encourage a truly democratic method of regulating the relations between the employers and employees by means of agreements freely entered into through collective bargaining. Okay? No court or administrative agency or official shall have the power to set or fix wages, rates of pay, hours of work, or other terms and conditions of employment. Okay, so, so, Um, with this uh, lab, uh, labor relations law, actually, the employees has the right or have the right rather to enter into collective bargaining and negotiation with the employer. You can actually demand no, na makipag-bargain mo sa employer. Okay? With respect to your terms and conditions of employment. Okay, let's go to terms no, or terminologies. Let's start with commission. It means the National Labor Relations Commission or any of its divisions as the case may be as provided under this code. So, uh, kung napansin ninyo, na nakabuta Commission Bureau Board, kuha na nga siya, shortcut lang nato na, no? Para dili na nato spell out dahil, no, ang NLRC. When you say commission, automatically it refers to the National Labor Relations Commission. Yeah. Bureau means the Bureau of Labor Relations and or the labor relations divisions in the regional offices established under PD number no. 1 in the Department of Labor. May off yan. 
Then when you say board, it means the National Conciliation and Mediation Board or NCMB. No? Council means the tripartite voluntary arbitration advisory council. Remember, ha? remember these terms. Employer includes any person acting in the interest of an employer directly or indirectly. So, alam niyo naman, di ba, kung sino si employer? Yung person na nag-hire, siya yung employer. Employee includes any person in the employee of an employer. The term shall not be limited to the employees of a particular employer unless this code so explicitly states. It shall include any individual whose work has ceased as a result of or in connection with any current labor dispute or because of any unfair labor practice if he has not obtained any sub other substantial equivalent and regular employment. So, when you say employee, so ang person na gihire, siya ang employee. Pero, nasa extended na definition, no? kaning term na, it shall include any individual whose work has ceased, meaning na terminate, as a result of or in connection with any current labor dispute. Okay? So, what is an example of that? An example is, ang employee, gitanggal siya sa employer tungod kay, let's say, uh, buntis ang employee, nag-leave siya. So, nag-apply siya, nag-avail siya karunog maternity leave for uh, 100 days. Karun, pagbalik sa employee, wala na siya gidawat sa employer. So, gitermineate ang iyahang employment. Okay? In the meantime, they are, uh, after that, no termination, the employee filed a case against the employer. Okay? Um, questioning the illegal dismissal. No? Meaning, uh, gina-allege na employee nga, she was illegally dismissed from employment. Ana. So, yun ang balaod, even if the employment of that female worker has already ceased, she can still be considered as an employee if the cessation of the employment is due to a current labor dispute, okay? For as long as that female employee has not obtained any other substantial equivalent and regular employment, pasabot, wala pa siya nakatrabaho, uglain na trabaho, which is substantially equivalent sa iyang previous na employment. So if that is the case, even if na-terminate ka, Basta kaya ang termination is by reason of a labor dispute and wala pa ka nakakita o bagong nga trabaho nga substantially equivalent and regular okay regular employment then you are still considered as an employee of your previous employer for purposes of labor relations law okay labor organization means any union or association of employees which exist in whole or in part for the purpose of collective bargaining or of dealing with employers concerning terms and conditions of employment. So, so kapag yung mga empleyado naggawa sila ng union or association of employees, ang tawag doon, labor organization. Legitimate labor organization means any labor organization duly registered with DOLE. So, if yung labor organization registrado siya sa DOLE, ang tawag sa kanya, legitimate labor organization. Company union means any labor organization whose information, function, or administration has been assisted by any act defined as unfair labor practice by this. So just take note of that. No, later you will know. You will understand what is company union. Ayan, labor dispute. Diba we mentioned earlier about labor dispute? So what is a labor dispute? It includes any controversy or matter concerning the terms or conditions of employment or the association or representation of persons in negotiating, fixing, maintaining, changing, or arranging the terms and conditions of employment. Regardless of whether the disputants stand in the proximate relation of employer and employee. So when you say labor dispute, basta anything, no, any controversy involving terms and conditions of employment, just like what I uh, gave you as an example, no, yung, yung diba, the, the female worker, um, uh, availed a leave of absence with pay. A maternity leave of absence. Now, um, under the labor standards law, 
when you say leave, that is a term or a condition of employment. No? That is part of the terms and conditions of employment. Kasi sabi ng batas, you are entitled to a maternity leave of 105 days. No? So yun, inavail ng employee. But, nung bumalik yung employee, hindi siya tinanggap ng employer. Instead, terminate yung kanyang employment. So, since the, the controversy or the matter involves a term or condition of employment, which is the leave, then that particular controversy is a labor dispute. Okay? Yan yung ibig sabihin niya. Even the question of employer-employee relationship can be considered a labor dispute. What is an example? Sabi ng employee, Uy, employer, gawin mo akong regular employee kasi empleyado mo ako. Sabi naman ni employer, hindi kita empleyado, uy. Servisyo lang ang kinuha ko sa'yo, hindi kita hinire. Job order ka lang. O, yan. So, pinagawayan nila ngayon kung empleyado ba siya o hindi. Sabi ng batas, that is a labor dispute. Because the question is about employer-employee relationship. Managerial employee is one who is vested with powers or prerogatives to lay down and execute management policies in order to hire, transfer, suspend, lay off, recall, discharge, assign, or discipline employees. So in short, if you have the power to hire, hire ka ng employee ba? You have the power to approve the hiring, the transfer, the suspension, lay off, recall, discharge, assign, or you have the power to discipline your employees. If you have that power, then you are considered as a managerial employee. Or you have the power to lay down and execute management policies. So kapag yan ang power mo, isa kang manager. Pero kung ang power mo ay to recommend lang managerial actions, no? effectively recommend managerial actions, then you are not a managerial employee but merely a supervisory employee. So kung Kung wala kang power to hire, ito, itong naka-enumerate, pero may power ka to recommend the hiring, the transfer, the suspension, etc., then you are a supervisory employee. If hindi ka managerial, hindi ka rin supervisory, then ano ka? You are a member of the rank and file employees. So, yan lang yung definition natin, yung classification of employees. Okay, let's, uh, uh, I will make a new ano, webinar, ah, webinar, Zoom meeting, no? Para continue tayo. Because uh, we will end in three minutes na.